So I wanted to talk a bit about sign conventions because this is something that can trip you up on a homework problem or an exam, even though it might seem trivial. So for a circuit with just a handful of resistors, this might not seem like something you really need to worry about because the direction in which current flowing can seem obvious. So if I have a battery with my plus and minus terminals there, then it's kind of obvious that current's going to flow this way and down through that resistor, and then it's going to split and go through each of these resistors. When it's not necessarily so obvious is if you have a more complicated circuit, say something like this. Where I have a resistor connecting between these two nodes. And it's not obvious just by looking at the circuit. These resistors all have different values, or one, or two, or three, or four, or five. It's not necessarily obvious whether the current's going to be flowing to the left or to the right in this middle resistor. It's going to depend on the values of all the other resistors and the voltages at these two nodes. So what we do to account for this when analyzing more complicated circuits is use a sign convention that positive current always flows out of the positive terminal of a source and in to the positive terminal of a passive element like a resistor. This also applies to capacitors and inductors, but I'm just going to use resistors for now in the example. So if I look at one individual resistor using Ohm's law, and sorry, let me backtrack for a second. Remember that a, a real resistor is not polar. Re resistors are reversible in real life. So these plus and minus signs that I've applied here are just mathematical for the sake of analyzing the circuit. Uh, an actual resistor does not have a plus or a minus sign. So if I look at an individual resistor, which could be anywhere in a circuit, and I'm just going to talk about in general, not one of these circuits in specific, specifically, and apply Ohm's law to that circuit, say I have VA and VB at the two nodes at the ends of that resistor. I'm going to pick a direction for positive current. So I'm going to say positive current is flowing from A to B, and that means I'm going to assign my sign convention to be consistent with that. So the plus side is on VA, and the minus side is on VB. Current is flowing into the positive terminal. Now, if I apply Ohm's law to that resistor, I'll get VA minus VB equals IR. And that works out fine if VA is greater than VB, then I'll get a positive number for I, which makes sense with the convention I picked. Say, for example, just for the sake of making the math easy, if R is 1 ohm, VA is 2 volts, and VB is 1 volt, then I'll just get I equals 1 amp. But if VB is less than VA, for example, if VB equals 2 volts and VA equals 1 volt, then I'll wind up getting I equals negative 1 amp. So the absolute value of the current is still the same. It's still 1 amp. This just means that the direction I picked for the current was wrong. So the current is actually flowing opposite the direction I picked for the arrow. So again, that might seem kind of silly for simple circuits like the one in the top left there. It doesn't really matter, but it would matter for a circuit like this one in the middle where, say, if I had picked my sign convention this way with plus on the left and minus on the right, that means I assume current is flowing from left to right. But if I then get a negative number for my current when I solve the circuit, that means current is actually flowing from right to left.